Well, if the obesity epidemic continues much longer, health officials believe life expectancy trends will start reversing. Within Hamilton County, obese adults are four times more likely to have diabetes and twice as likely to have high blood pressure when compared to healthy individuals. WDEF News host Joe Legge looks at how health concerns lead some people to wellness. It is a story you'll see only on 12. John, all this month we presented how we got to this epidemic called obesity and what's being done locally to change course. Tonight we introduce you to two people who got the obesity wake-up call. You wouldn't know it to look at her, but about a year ago, Lucretia Parker weighed 100 pounds heavier. My blood sugars were out of um, whack. My triglycerides were uh, very high, so it was leading to a very high-risk problem for my body. Doctors diagnosed Parker with diabetes, blood pressure, and obesity, sending her a wake-up call. Fearing she wouldn't be around to watch her two sons grow up, she sought help. You have to change everything, your lifestyle, your eating habits, your exercise habits, everything. You have to have a uh, change of mind and a way of thinking about your life. Parker underwent a year-long weight management program supervised by Memorial Hospital. Now, she starts most days with exercise and altered her family's eating habits to reduce everyone's intake of fat and sugar. With me eating and out of shape and, and the things that are going on in my life, how could I tell them, hey, you need to eat right, you need to exercise, and this is this myth if I'm not doing it, you have to set a positive message. Not everyone can do it through diet and exercise alone. Remember Dr. Robert Sass, the gastrointestinal surgeon from an earlier story? On December 29th of 2005, I got my life back. That's the date he acted on his obesity wake-up call. I can remember uh, looking into the mirror one day and saying, you know, you are your patients and you need to do something about it. Sass had grown tired of feeling lousy and being hungry all the time and decided to undergo an operation he would performed on several patients, gastric bypass. I did go to the gym, I did use the elliptical machine and the treadmill and of course uh, every heavy person is good at weights. I was able to power lift with no problem, but none of that was really helping me. Sass weighed 260 pounds at the time of the surgery. Nearly 10 months later, he'd lost 100 pounds. He didn't get to this point just from surgery, though. Sass has the same rules about diet and exercise apply. Only now, they work. I trade that off for prescriptions for blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and I think most people out there would be more than happy to do that. Sass, who struggled with weight since he was a teenager, wishes others would come to understand the limitations they put on themselves by being obese. I'm able to... Uh, move on with my life in, in a way that I could have never imagined possible. UTC will play host to a summit on this issue in April. Organizers hope to develop a new set of active living strategies for Chattanooga area residents. Our series, The Obesity Wake-Up Call, continues online at WDEF.com. If you missed any of the stories, you can catch up there.